Okay, so we're um, outside uh, in a small space that I uh, created a little small garden in the backyard. Um, I want to make sure you can see the ground. We're going to talk about really managing the ground. So we, we brought up several mulches for you guys to, to see. This is a wood chip mulch. It's very, very thick. Um, it's got branches, it's still got sticks, it's got bigger pieces of mulch, I mean wood, it's even got big pieces of sticks. So this is the perfect wood, uh, wood chip mulch is perfect for your tree beds. Um, this is what I would use for pathways or tree beds. I even don't even like to use this for pathways because my beds are right on the ground and it's easily, if I, if I put it, if I put this mulch on the ground, it could easily get into the bed and it eventually always does. I, I did it in the past and I just found that. So I would probably not use this uh, big, pick up a mulch on my garden bed. It would be perfect for um, just mulching a space or for your trees. Um, here at Hopi, you can find this type of mulch in Flagstaff area, that's where our forests are. So NAU sometimes offers free mulch. Uh, the, the landfill can offer mulch. The landfill offers a little bit better mulch though, in my opinion, better meaning it's finer. This is pine needles. We went camping in the forest and I said, we have to bring some pine needles home. Every time we go somewhere, we bring pine needles home. Um, and so this is pine needles that I've just taken, we're taking right off the forest floor. But it's even better if you can do it, and I bought a chipper for this, is to run this through a chipper so that your pine needles are actually smaller. They're almost like, they're like this size versus this size. For Hopi, this size is great because it gets stuck together really easy, but this side is nice if you're trying to mulch carrots, young carrots or young beets or young onions. The finer mulch is really nice and they still kind of get tangled as you, as you fall, as they drop. But the nice thing about this is it gets tangled up and it, it doesn't blow away very easily. Um, and it adds a little acidity to the oil. So we'll talk about soil science, that's great. I also pick out all these big chunks of whatever pine cones, because I don't want those in my garden, but that's me. You can decide how much you want to go. This is straw, loose straw. Sometimes it's great to apply loose straw and sometimes it's great to apply the, the full flakes that's all compacted and thick. So um, these are very long stems. Sometimes you buy straw, they're really long and sometimes they're very short. So it just depends when you buy them, what it looks like. You can, the same chipper I'm gonna use to chip up the pine needles, I can chip up straw. So if you have a chipper and you want smaller pieces, you probably have to add that task on and that equipment to do that. And then lastly, we brought up some deep. This is corn stalks. This is actually from earlier this year. Um, I think the elk got into our field, knocked over some corn. And so we, um, my husband said he doesn't like any of that laying in the field because it makes it look like it's been, just makes it clean, uh, makes it cleaner. I think there's other reasons. I can't remember what he said, but we brought it all home and we piled it and it's just been drying there. So you can see the full stalks still on there. I wouldn't put it on the garden like this. This is really big. So what I would do is probably run it through the chipper when it's really dry like this and then make it smaller and then it'll slowly decompose. But you can also see there's smaller pieces of the, the husk and other things in there. So this is perfect. This is all really good stuff for mulch. It's all going to be biodegradable. Um, I used to have a bag of paper out here. Um, my sister works at one of the elementary schools. She gave, I said, you want paper? I'm like, yeah, bring it over. And then the, um, I use it in a lasagna bed. So shredded paper is, works great too. So all we're going to do, so if you want to look at the, um, move this out of the way a little bit, you can see, I've, I've told you before we've taken classes that we try and keep a dedicated space for the garden bed. So we run lines, put an anchor at the end with a rebar, and you can see that here. And then we run lines so that we can see where the end of the bed is. If we put lines, then we know that that's where the garden's growing space starts. And so we're gonna, that's my guide to say that's where I wanna mulch, that's where I'm gonna plant, and that's not where I'm gonna walk because we don't want that compaction to happen. We'll do everything from outside and, and lean in to work. So you see there is some mulch. I've, I've reapplied this bed so much with mulch, but it was with all straw mulch. And the winds come from this direction. 
and the wind comes in, this whole corner is all, this whole side and corners there, all the, all the straws on that side. So I'll pick it up and come back. So this is for, it's just great for a lot of reasons, but it's just too light when it comes to, um, uh, to uh, our wind conditions out here. So, but if I was to mulch again, which I'm going to do, uh, it's late summer, right? All the plants are huge. Uh, we're just gonna lay this down, take it out, and I'm just gonna mulch up to the line. And I can see already, it's so light. This mulch is so light. I'm gonna go down underneath and I'm gonna apply it to all the, where the stems of the plant is. And I'm gonna lift the, any leaves above it um, to make sure that it's mulched even underneath the leaves. So when it rains, all that moisture will stay in that area. I'll add a layer of straw mulch and then I'll come back with a layer, with a finer layer of pine needle mulch. And when I put it on, I do it high like this so it can fall and tangle up on its own. If I, if I grab a clump and I put it down, it tends to stay clumpy. So with pine needle mulch, I'll take it and then I'll just stand three feet above it and let it fall. I found that this combination helps because I don't use as much pine needles because I got to go and get it. And it keeps that straw mulch from blowing away. So I'll, I'll do a finer layer of the pine needle mulch on top of straw, and I found that kind of works well for me. So we've already created, if I dig down, we've created here's almost like two inches of mulch just on this space right here, but I have to do the rest of the bed. So I brought out this squash plant. These are, these are summer squash. I don't usually mulch summer squash because the squash bugs that are really prevalent on um, summer squash plants, they love mulch. That's where they live. They live in mulch. And if you have a, so I usually, I don't mulch squash. Um, so I, I pick one bed where we're gonna have um, summer squash and I don't mulch with this kind of mulch. I'll mulch with like maybe ag fabric or maybe cardboard, something that I can kind of pick up and look for them and put them back down. Um, so, so I don't, but sometimes it's just plain, plain open because they just, it just really helps them breathe better. Um, but this year, for some odd reason, we didn't have a lot of squash bugs. I put, I, I put this in, I mulch, and I say, when I start to see squash bugs, I'll move all the mulch. So usually when I grow squash, I'll dedicate just one bed to that because they, I don't want to breed squash bugs anymore. Um, but for some reason this year, we didn't have a lot. Where's the wood? Hopefully they don't come. It's past squash bug season, so I think we're okay. Um, so in the future, you're going to hear me say, mulch everything but squash. But here you're seeing me mulch the squash, so that's why I'm just explaining that. Um, two weeks ago, we did transplanting class, and mid-July is the time to start planting, starting seeds for a fall garden. This is a black magic summer squash. You see how big the transplant is. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to transplant this out here so you can see how we transplant with mulch. Um, I'm going to put it right here. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread out the mulch for the hole I'm going to make. I'm not going to take everything off. I'm just going to make a hole where the mulch was. I'm going to dig down. With my hands, it's moist enough. We just watered this really, really well about two weeks ago. and. Um, still very moist. There's a lot of rocks in this bed because it's right behind a building where there's a foundation that's being built, so it's not the ideal space, but what we got. Uh, when you take a transplant out, you always put the stem between your fingers, turn it over, knock the bottom out or squeeze the sides, and out comes your plant. Nice roots. Get these beautiful roots. They're already starting to, they want to go beyond the container, so that means it, this plant is ready to be transplanted. Put it back over. There's my squash plant. I'll make a hole, make sure it's big enough, and I'm just going to set it right in the hole. And then I'll take the ground below it, and I'm going to cover it with soil, make sure it's in there pretty good. Am I done yet? Nope, because I need the mulch. 
So I'm going to pull the mulch back around to cover up the soil that I just exposed. This marker is not going to last more than three weeks out here because of the sun. So this marker is wood. It's only meant for this stage. I have to come back now and mark it later for uh, with something else that's going to withstand the sun and the rain and the heat. But for now, I'm just going to put it in here so I don't forget. That's a black magic summer squash. If you have really bad squash bug problems, start a set of squash in March. Plant that. It's a summer plant, so it can't get any frost. But um, start another one, another set in June. And if your squash is really bad with squash bugs, you can pull that old one and then have a new one come up. That's just a little trick. Okay? So I hope this helps gives you a sense of um, how to apply mulch, uh, little tricks. And the best thing is to do is work with a grower, gardener. If you're in the area, come see me. I got lots of stuff to do.